What up guys, this is going to be the slightly longer version of my talent tree guide and here I'm just going to go over a little bit more about why I've chosen certain talents and other options that you could potentially switch to, when they're going to be good uh, and that kind of thing. So first of all, we are starting with Unbreakable Will. This is pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, you pretty much never go Twin Disciplines for PvP because, I mean, read the talent, it's obviously insane. So we're going to start off with that. Then Silent Resolve, again, this is going to be part of every single PvP build. Insanely strong talent, you will never not take this uh, in any kind of PvP build. Next, we've got Improved Inner Fire. Now, this is really strong because over level 70, Inner Fire starts giving you spell power as well. Uh, and so this talent actually increases the amount of spell power that you get from that. Spell power is really strong in Wrath of the Lich King compared to healing in TBC. The, the scaling and the coefficients uh, are all boosted on a lot of our spells. And so spell power actually really helps with survivability as well as overall healing output due to obviously bigger shields, uh, bigger penances, this kind of thing. Now, there's also the option to go for Imp Fortitude. These talents will likely come out of some stuff low down in the tree, and I'll talk about that later. If we are under an insane amount of pressure in certain matchups where we're getting zerged down, then this might be a good talent to try and pick up as well. Meditation is just standard. We basically have no regen without this during combat. We lose all the value from spirit. So this is always going to be taken three out of three. Same for inner focus. No reason to ever not take this talent. And same for imp shield. Uh, shields obviously being such an important part of healing rotation in Wrath of the Lich King. Not affected by Mortal Strike and obviously an instant. And then with the Soul Warding, there is no cooldown on it either. We've got things like Rapture later on that benefit us for the shield as well. So we'll talk about that as well later. But yeah, you will always take this. Uh, Absolution. I would say this is slightly, slightly weaker than in TBC. And I think Dispelling is slightly less of a part of your gameplay in Wrath compared to TBC, but it's still an insanely strong talent. Uh, so I will take three out of three. And then Mental Agility has gone down from five to three points, but it's still really, really strong. So many of your spells are instants, you know, Dispel, Shield, Palm, Renew, uh, etc. So 10% mana cost reduction is really, really nice. Then we have Imp Burn. And I think there's maybe some comps potentially where you might not take this, but in general, for, for a general build and a starter build, I would say always take this and then if you get to the level in some comp where you feel like okay yeah the, this matchup isn't about mana burn there's no real um opportunities to use mana burn well here maybe you can take some points out of this but i think that's quite a high level and if you're at that point you probably don't need this guide next we've got mental strength five out of five and obviously we take this because we need it to get pi and as we said already soul wooding uh, reflective Shield actually doesn't work on other players in Wrath of the Lich King. So, for a general build, I won't actually take this, as it only works on yourself. However, I think that there are definitely some twos comps that can benefit from this a lot. And as we talked about earlier with Fort, you're going to have to take those two points from somewhere a little bit lower in the tree. And we'll talk about that again shortly. Uh, Focus Power has changed slightly, but one second off Master Spell Cast Time is invaluable. So we pretty much always take this. Enlightenment is a new talent, but increasing total spirit and increasing your haste by 6% is insanely, insanely strong for three points. And I pretty much would always take this no matter what. It's going to be very much uh, of your haste, in, especially in the early seasons where you don't have the option to get as much. Um, and so this is a really, really strong talent. Then we've got Focus Will. This is your core survivability talent. You would never not take this. Power Infusion needs no introduction. Now, the more interesting parts. So we're going to start with, I guess, Rapture. We will take three out of three Rapture because this is really, really good, especially on ourself uh, in terms of mana regen, but on others as well. Pretty much shielding once every 12 seconds is, is going to be a given, and this is going to be an actual decent part of your regen throughout the match. So we've got one out of two and renewed hope, and this is generally due to a lack of talents, but the core part of this is the 3% damage reduction that you get for one minute after shielding, and... Because you're going to be throwing out quite a lot of shields, this is going to have pretty much 100% uptime, even with one out of two points in it. Um, you lose the 2% extra crit on targets with Weakened Soul, but it's a price that you pay, essentially, to get other talents. So we've got Aspiration, which is actually a really, really strong talent. Reducing cooldown of Inner Focus, Power Infusion, Pain Suppression, and Penance is actually quite a big one by 20%. And we're going to talk about the Penance cooldown a little bit later as well. Next, we've got one out of three Divine Aegis, and I've put the point in this 
because it will provide you a little bit of extra dispel protection potentially when you crit. Uh, it's not actually going to give you that much absorb and this talent point can potentially be spent elsewhere as we talked about earlier. Potentially it can go into shield, it can go into imp fort. Uh, generally I don't take martyrdom because it's not that strong but you could potentially do this as well. If you feel like you're casting a lot of spells that are getting pushed back, it's no longer uh, an interrupt immunity in Wrath, it is only a reduction. Um, and you do require having been crit to gain the value of this. So certain matchups this will be good, others not so much. For a general bladder build, I'm opting to uh, leave it out, but you can take it if you prefer. Uh, the other point that you can potentially get for those switch ups that I talked about is from Grace. Now you can reduce Grace down to one out of two and generally stack it pretty quickly. It stacks once per tick of penance. And obviously if you're flash healing, you'll get some stacks as well. Uh, usually if you only have one point, it will take two penances and, and then you'll have the full stack up. If you wanna stack it much quicker, then having two out of two is valuable. But yeah, this is this is the, the tricky part of the build, I would say. Uh, I prefer playing with two out of two. I think it's much more reliable. Then we have pain suppression. Obviously we're gonna be taking this and five out of five borrowed time. Really, really strong talent, obviously boosting our power shield as well. And the 25% spell haste after shielding actually doesn't get consumed when you use a penance. So this is actually a really good tip. And then obviously penance, we're not going to be skipping that. Uh, now in holy, we have two out of two healing focus, the damage pushback reduction obviously being really nice when we're tanking. And then instead of imp renew, we're gonna put three out of five in holy spec. There is a little bit more of an option to crit in Wrath of the Lich King, and there's a few more perks to it. Uh, one of which is going to be Inspiration. Most of our spells, I think barring Holy Nova, most of our heals will provide Inspiration, which is now 10% physical damage reduction uh, as opposed to armor. So this is actually really strong for tanking melee. Uh, getting any crit on any tick of penance obviously will provide this. 5 out of 5 Divine Fury so that you can use Smite and Great Heal as well as Holy Fire. Holy Fire, very strong in Wrath of the Lich King. And then one point, obviously, in Desperate Prayer, which is now a two-minute cooldown in Wrath uh, and no longer our racial. Uh, and this is actually taking the place of Holy Nova on the tree, which is now baseline. In terms of Glyphs, we're going to be running Glyph of Pain Suppression and Glyph of Penance basically all the time. Your third Glyph is something that you could potentially rotate out. I would say Glyph of Inner Fire going to be slightly stronger in 2v2, where you're going to be tanking more, uh, especially tanking more melee. And then in threes, depending on your comp, you can run Glyph of Inner Fire, or you can also uh, potentially run Glyph of Power Word Shield. So this was pretty much all of the things I wanted to say about the talents. I hope that this was informative uh, and kind of got you a little bit more up to speed on my decision making and thought process on why I've taken these talents, why I've gone for this build. As I said, there are a few things that you can uh, fiddle around with. Uh, and adjust to suit your needs. Um, but this, I think, is a decent core build to get started with, and you should be able to do fine with it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.